Let's talk about how to stop being so darn tired when you wake up in the morning. I used to be so tired for years. I'm talking probably about 15 years of fatigue in the morning. I had no idea what it was. Um, it was terrible. It felt like I had a helmet over my head all the time, like brain fog. And it took me until probably 11 o'clock in the morning before I can actually wake up. So I guess you would say I'm an expert in fatigue, okay? So if you apply what I'm about to tell you, you can easily get rid of this fatigue and wake up feeling refreshed and rested. The majority of your fatigue in the morning is really coming from your diet, okay? But there's other things, but the diet is the most important thing. What you ate yesterday is going to affect you today, especially if it's in the area of too many carbohydrates and starches and sugars. Why is that? Because when you're doing that, you're running on glucose and your brain is very susceptible to developing something called insulin resistance. So what does that actually mean for the brain? It means that you don't have enough insulin in the brain to drive the glucose into the neuron cells. So basically, you're kind of starving off your brain cells of fuel. And that does not make your brain feel good. It makes your brain feel tired and brain foggy. You're not, you're going to lack the concentration. Now, for me, I, I would say maybe late 20s, maybe I might have been like, yeah, late 20s, maybe 28, 29, when I stumbled on changing my breakfast from a carb breakfast, which I did for years, to a protein breakfast, it was like a switch. It was like this helmet lifted off and I got really interested in why that was and I started doing deep dives into what's called a ketogenic diet. But for me, it was very quick. But the point is, I mean, if you go to the IHOP or, or a restaurant where you have breakfast foods, it's orange juice, it's cereal, it's pancakes, it's muffins, it's carbs, it's sugar. So I know a lot of people are waking up really, really grouchy and really, really tired. So it's not just fatigue, it's your mood, okay? Now, are there other symptoms that kind of prove this point? Yes. If you're waking up feeling hungry, if you're waking up craving anything, if you're waking up feeling grouchy, if you have any fog in your mind when you wake up, then your blood sugars are off. The worst thing you can do is to add more carbs to raise your blood sugars to treat this low blood sugar situation why because you just you make yourself feel a little better but then it's going to get worse because the more carbs you do the more sugar you do your body's going to start protecting the cells from that even more and resisting it more and more and more it's just a it's a never ending cycle a better thing to do is just to skip the breakfast altogether now if you cut down your carbs throughout the day you will find the next day and maybe it might take two days, you'll find you're not going to be hungry in the morning. Your cravings are going to start going away. Why? Because you're restricting your body of carbs and sugar, and your body then will start burning fat, your own fat, as well as the, the fat in your diet. And if given the choice, your brain loves to burn ketones, okay? And that's the byproduct of fat. If you wake up with a headache, if you wake up feeling kind of bloated, it could be that you went out to dinner the day before or went out to a restaurant the day before. What you ate the day before has a huge impact on how you're going to feel today. Now, personally, my wife and I would, in the past, a long time ago, would go to Taiwanese restaurants, uh, Chinese restaurants. We, we loved that, okay? And we ate a lot of rice and we had a lot of carbs and we had a lot of MSG, which is a flavor enhancer. And at the time, I didn't even connect the dots, but... I would always wake up feeling bloated, uh, retaining fluid, and feeling really irritable in the head, which made me crave certain things and want to do that same thing the next day. I mean, there was even a year I think I had a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream right before bed. But if you're waking up feeling nauseous, headachy, bloated, it's usually that. And also uh, stiffness. You wake up with stiffness. It's usually something you ate that's affecting your liver. And if you have a liver issue, you can create a lot of stiffness. Now, a couple key points uh, to help you wake up feeling refreshed is 
you must do intermittent fasting, okay, and skip that breakfast. In fact, this is what I would do. I would have your first meal at noon and your second meal at least five hours before you go to bed, okay? I mean, even earlier if you could, you will find a huge improvement in your sleep cycles if you don't eat so close to when you go to bed. I mean, you should just prove this to yourself, okay? One day you eat right before you go to bed, next day you eat like at five, okay? Or even at four in the afternoon and nothing after that. Watch how well you sleep. One of the things that people have uh, temptations, they have certain cravings, they have certain habits, and they're constantly giving into them. The way that you strengthen your willpower is just by avoiding these things, okay? And it takes a while, but as soon as you start doing it, you'll get momentum. But to constantly give in to the body and just cave just weakens your, uh, your willpower over time. And don't ever ask your body, hmm, what is my body in the mood for? Because it's not going to give you the right answer. The attitude that I use with my body is basically, um, I'm going to give you the food that you need to survive and get healthy. And I see that my stomach is grumbling, but I'm not going to give in to that. I will feed you when I'm good and ready. I have to constantly remind my body who is boss. I mean, it's literally crazy what's happening with people out of control with food. I mean, completely um, out of control. I mean, they're just letting their bodies dictate exactly what they want at any given moment. So it's a trap. You got to get out of the trap and uh, you have to start putting in control over your body. And when you start doing intermittent fasting, boy, your hunger goes right away. A couple other things now related to this fatigue in the morning. It's if you're sitting in front of a computer like I am um, a good portion of the day, or you're staring at your cell phone or a, a laptop, whatever, you're going to get a couple things happen. You're going to get EMF, electromagnetic fields that are going to affect your body. And uh, I bought this little tri-field uh, device to detect EMF. And I found the back wall where my bed is had a lot of problems and extended this electromagnetic field like eight feet out from the wall. And so I was sleeping in the bathing in this electromagnetic field. And I literally had an electrician take the wall down and um, fix some of the cross wires. And boy, did I sleep good after that. So you have that, and then you have this blue light that does not help your eyes. And then you also have the cell phone connected to your head. I mean, that is not good for your brain. You talk about brain fog. And then you also have these things right here, which I hate with a passion, but unfortunately, I have to use them when I'm reading certain things. But the problem is when I use them, it makes things worse. So I literally have to take half the day, take them off and just go for a walk and just look at things in the distance to, to actually correct some of that. But, you know, you might think that you're tired, but it could be just the glasses that are making your eyes tired, making your head tired. As far as exercise goes, very, very important to use exercise to flush out adrenaline and stress and cortisol through the day. It's going to help increase your tolerance for stress. It's going to help you sleep deeper, especially if you do, like three times a week, high-intensity interval training. That can greatly help your sleep, as well as long walks or hikes, or even better yet, doing physical work around your house, outside somewhere. Very therapeutic to your sleep and the quality of waking up feeling good. Also, jet lag. If you want to handle your jet lag, it's a real simple solution. If you fly somewhere, take about 30 or 40,000 units of vitamin D, okay? And uh, that pretty much resets the clock in your brain. Temperature is another important thing when you're sleeping. Uh, it's best if you're on the cooler side. That will help the quality of sleep and make you wake up feeling better. Your mattress. Did you realize you spend one third of your entire life on a mattress? So invest in a good mattress. And Keeping the window open, if at all possible, will greatly help your ability to sleep. And lastly, make sure that you're breathing through your nose when you're sleeping. I created a very interesting video on that, and I'm going to put that up right here. You should watch that video next.